Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at making this paper cut looking terrain effect. All in all, it's not very complicated, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So here we are in Adobe After Effects. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click this button here for a new composition. Mine's gonna be 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second, six seconds long. I'm gonna call this map and we can go ahead and click okay. Now, the first thing I wanna do is add a new solid and I'm just gonna call this noise because we're gonna be adding the fractal noise effect to it. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using Effects Console, which is a free plugin from Video Copilot. Uh, if you don't have it installed, I highly recommend it, but if not, you are able to search for the same effects over here in the effects and presets panel or up here at the top under the effects dropdown. But again, I'm just hitting control space, bringing up effects console and typing in fractal noise. Now there's definitely a lot we can do to customize this effect. However, just to start out, I'm gonna increase the contrast to somewhere above 200 and then also the scale to somewhere above 200 also. Now I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer to the top and then add a fast box blur to it. Now, before we play with those settings, I'm also going to add the posturize effect. Is it posturize? Posturize, posturize. Anyway, essentially what this is doing is it's limiting the number of tonal levels in this image for each channel. And since this is only grayscale, we're only worried about the brightness. So simply put, there's only seven different colors that can exist in this image now. But I know from doing this effect before that I like the number to be at about eight. However, we can go back and change that later if we choose to do so. Now you're gonna see something cool happen when we start to increase the blur radius on this fast box blur. The posturize effect really does take over the whole image. Now you can see some of these dark values start to show up on the edge, and that's just because we didn't click this repeat edge pixels box. So let's go ahead and leave these settings right where they are for now. And we're gonna come back over into the project panel drag your map comp down here to create a new comp with it inside of it. And I'm gonna right click, choose composition settings and rename this to something like main, just to differentiate it from our map comp. So what we need to do here is isolate each one of these colors onto its own layer. To do that, let's start out with the color key effect. Go ahead and select this eyedropper and let's start with black. Set the color tolerance up to one. And then if you toggle the transparency switch right down here, You'll notice we've gotten rid of the black in this image, which is actually the opposite of what we were trying to do. So to fix that, let's also add the invert effect. Change channel RGB down here to alpha, and there we go. Now we know from the posturize effect that there were eight colors in this image, so we're gonna need eight layers. Let's turn off the effects for this one, select map, and then hit control D to duplicate it, and keep doing that until there are eight copies. So control D makes three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So right now, each of these color key effects are all sampling the black color, when in reality, we want them to each be sampling one of these unique colors from this frame. So let's go through and change each one. Now I want white to be on the top and black to be on the bottom. So since eight is already set to black, let's click seven and zoom in here till we can see a good looking gradient. Right here is good because we see white, black, and all the colors in between. So with seven selected, select the color key eyedropper and click the color right above black. Now we're gonna go up each layer, changing the color key effect to select the next color in line until the top one, number one, is white. Now this is arguably the most tedious part of doing this effect. And if we go back and change the posterize effect later, we'll have to readjust this. So typically it's good to lock on a level that you like. However, we can add more of these map copies later if we choose to do so. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and turn back on the effects for each one of these layers just by clicking and dragging. And we shouldn't notice a difference if we did everything correctly, because now each one of these colors, if we solo, is isolated onto its own layer, just like we were trying to do. So now comes the part where we get to add the illusion of depth just like we saw in the original example. So to the top of this, I'm gonna add a null object. So go to layer, new, choose null object, and I'm gonna rename this to control. And to this null object, I'm gonna add two slider controls. So we can just add one, select it, hit control D to duplicate. And I'm also going to add a angle control. Now I'm gonna select this top slider control, hit enter and rename it to distance, and select the second one and rename it to softness. Now let's select our top map and add the drop shadow effect to it. 
And then what we're gonna do before playing with any of these settings is hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for direction, distance, and softness. Now let's select our control null again, come up here to the effect control panel and click the lock. So that way it keeps these effects visible while we select our map. Now let's grab our direction under the drop shadow effect on our map, click this pick whip tool and drag it up here to the angle control of our control null. And uh, let's scroll down, do the same for distance up here to the one we labeled distance and the same for softness up to softness. Now we can click this button here to uh, close that out. And let's also unlock our effects control. Now, before we play with those settings, I'm gonna select the drop shadow effect, hit control C to copy it, and then select the rest of the maps by clicking on number three, holding shift and clicking on number nine down here, and then hitting control V for paste. Now, if we come up here to our control null, we can play with these settings and you'll see that we're starting to get some depth using the drop shadow effect and you can soften that up. I'm actually gonna change the angle to be somewhere down like 160 degrees. And we can actually increase the distance a little bit more too. And you can already start to see what this is doing. Now, before we go about customizing the look of this terrain, I wanna add a few more controllers to this null. So let's add on two more slider controls. Again, you can just select the one you added and hit control D. Now I'm gonna rename this top one to detail and rename this bottom one to random. Now the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit different than before because we need to do our pick whipping from this map comp. So we need to be able to see both at the same time. So to do that, let's uh, drag this up to make a bit more room, click your map comp and drag it down to the bottom until you see this blue bar and let go. Now I wanna select my adjustment layer here from the map comp and hold alt and click on the blur radius of our fast box blur. And then scroll down here, select your noise, toggle open the evolution options, and then alt click on the random seed. Now, just as before, let's select our control null, lock the effects controls up here at the top so we can see it. And then let's scroll down here till we see the random seed and pick whip it up here to the random slider. Let's also scroll up until we see the fast box blur, there it is, and pick whip the blur radius to our detail slider. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and drag our map comp back up beside our main. And also I wanna unlock this effects control. Now back here in our main comp, you'll notice that things look a lot different. And that's because our fast box blur is now controlled by this detail slider and it's set to zero. So if we start cranking this up, you'll notice that we're getting rid of some of this detail and making it look like it did before. And also the fractal noise that controls this whole effect has its random seed linked to our random slider. So if you're looking at this frame thinking, yeah, I don't really like how some of these shapes are looking, we can kind of just play with this until we see something we like. And I think that looks pretty cool right there. I like these long shapes. Now, my reason for adding a detail and a random slider to this null is just to show you that you can link a lot of settings from this fractal noise to this control null in this comp to easily animate and change the look of this terrain without having to bounce back and forth in between these two comps. So you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just something that I like to do sometimes that I wanted to share with you guys. Now let's start adding a little bit of life to this terrain. I wanna start by creating a new adjustment layer. And since this is a grayscale effect, I know that it's gonna work really well with the color vibrance effect from Video Copilot, which is another free plugin that I highly recommend you go grab. So just like in my original example, I think I'm gonna give this a sort of reddish orange color. Maybe right about there looks cool. And maybe let's also throw on a curves adjustment. Gonna add a little bit more contrast here. Maybe bring out some of the blue in the shadows. That might look kind of cool. Yeah, I'm liking that. We can definitely keep tweaking this, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. And now there's one more effect I wanna add to this that's gonna help with creating the depth illusion when we start to animate it. That effect is called optics compensation. So if we check this reverse lens distortion and then turn up the field of view, we're gonna start stretching out the edges of this image so that way they disappear. Somewhere around 50 I found looks cool. So now say we wanna animate this to go from flat to having depth, just like in the original example. We can come to our control null and let's move forward about three seconds and create a keyframe for the distance and the softness. Come back here to the beginning and we can turn both of those down to zero. Now alone, this is working pretty good, but 
it's not perfect because I feel like as this depth stretches out, I wanna see a little bit more of this image. And that's where the optics compensation comes in. So if we come to the beginning and we click on our adjustment layer, scroll down to the optics compensation, let's create a keyframe for the field of view. Go forward to about three seconds and then set this back down to zero. So now if you play this back, you get this pretty convincing bowing effect, which actually looks like the ground is starting to get some depth. Now let's go about putting some depth of field on here. So I wanna create a new adjustment layer and uh, I'm just gonna rename this one to depth and I'm gonna add the camera lens blur effect to it. Now the camera lens blur effect has this cool option called a blur map, which is going to allow you to choose a layer that'll tell this image where you want it to be blurred. Now the way it works is it bases how blurry it is off of its luminance value, which is perfect for our case because we already have a perfect grayscale demonstrating how high and low some of these areas are and therefore telling our camera lens blur how blurry they need to be. So let's go ahead and select our layer for our blur map to be any one of our map compositions. It doesn't matter which one you choose because by default, it only looks at what's inside of the pre-comp rather than any effects we applied to it. If we wanted it to take the effects into account, we'd have to change it from source to effects and masks, but we're not gonna do that. Now I'm gonna increase the blur radius up to 15 just so you can really see what this is doing. If I zoom in here, check this out. The high areas are super blurry and the low areas are in focus. I actually want it to do the opposite of that. So let's grab our blur focal distance and turn this all the way up to 255. Now you could also animate this parameter to get sort of a rack focus effect, which is a pretty cool idea, but we're not gonna be doing it in this tutorial. And just like the fast box blur effect, you'll notice some fringing on the edges. So go ahead and check your repeat edge pixels box. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and animate the blur radius to go from zero at zero seconds up to 15 at three seconds. And that's just gonna add another convincing layer to this depth illusion. Now that's actually pretty much it for this terrain technique. However, there's just a couple more tips I wanna show you guys before we wrap this up. Now in the original example, I sort of had like a hole opening up where I had some text reveal. And to do that's actually pretty easy. If we come over here into our map comp, and I'm just gonna close these out so we have a bit more room to work with. Let's create a new solid and I'm gonna make it black, click OK, and put this below the adjustment layer. And I'm gonna grab my circular mask tool and just draw a mask around the middle. And even as I'm drawing it, you can see what this is doing. It's being blurred out and affected by the posterize effect at the same time. So we pretty much can put this wherever we want animate it to open and close and create this really interesting looking hole right in the middle of our terrain. Now say you want some text in there to form also like in the original example. Well, we can come back over to our map comp, click on our text tool, click somewhere right in the middle and I'm just gonna type rock. And let's center this up. And if we put this below our adjustment layer, you'll notice that it gets just a little bit too blurred out and that's gonna be an issue. The quick way to fix that is to grab your adjustment layer, duplicate it, grab your bottom copy, delete the posterize effect off, and then grab your top copy and delete the fast box blur effect. So now if we take our rock text layer and put it in between these two adjustment layers, it'll be affected by the posterize, but not by the fast box blur. That'll allow us to add our own fast box blur to that layer and then control just how blurry it is on the text itself. Another fun thing you can do to animate this is create a new null object. And let's hit P on the keyboard to bring up its position information. I'm actually gonna put it up here at the top. And let's grab our fractal noise effect, come down here to the transform and alt click on the offset turbulence. Now let's grab our pick whip tool and bring it up here to the position of our null. And we can uh, close that out. And let's grab our text layer and our black solid and parent them both to the null as well. And now if we grab that null and move it around, you can see that we can actually animate the position of this null to sort of get this side scrolling effect again, like you saw in the original example. Now I'm already taking up a little bit too much of your guys' time, but I wanna show you just one last thing you can do to give this a little bit more life. So I'm gonna turn off our text layer and our black solid, just so we're back to our original noise. Come back over here into our main comp. And let's zoom in here so we can see some of these layers. And in fact, I'm actually gonna turn off our depth of field. 
So these layers are all looking really flat, which is actually what I was intending to do to sort of give it this paper cut looking effect. But let's say we want to give them a little bit more depth. Well, a trick for that is to add on the bevel alpha effect to your map comp. And if we zoom in here on some of these top white pieces, you can barely get a hint at what it's doing. Let's actually increase the edge thickness here so we can see it a bit better. It's just giving it this small profile. Now we want this light angle to be coming from the exact opposite direction that the shadows are heading in. So in order to do that, let's alt click on the light angle and scroll up here to our control null. And one last time, let's lock the effects controls and let's drag our light angle from our bevel alpha pick whip up to the angle control. But before we click away, I wanna type in minus 180. And now if we move this angle control around, you can see that the shadows and the bevel angle both react realistically. Now, one thing I forgot to do is we actually need to make sure that the bevel alpha is before the drop shadow. So that way it's not affecting the alpha on the shadow and instead just affecting the alpha on the solid piece. Now, I actually wanna set the edge thickness down to three and then the light intensity down to about 0.2. I just want this to be pretty subtle. So if we grab our bevel alpha effect, hit control C to copy it, we can paste it to the rest of our map comps. And then what we would need to do is go through each one of them individually, moving the bevel alpha above the drop shadow to get rid of that weird fringing issue on the shadow itself. But that's gonna be pretty much it for this one. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or definitely feel free to hit me up on Twitter. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me. And as always, don't forget to like if you learned something and consider subscribing.